Riley has just turned 16. No, not too bad as in that. But this Gold Coast teenager is anything but sweet. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Another parent will probably look at me like, yeah, she's normal. My parents just have higher expectations. I don't care, you're not having my phone to buy me cigarettes. I can't buy them, they're even stupid or something. Riley has a serious attitude problem. It's all about me, 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 me. That's a nice thing to say. Hey, the plane crashes on the way home. It's silly behaviour. I don't care, I don't care, Riley. shut up. I am disrespectful, but I just, I just do what I want. With that much disrespect and be so hurtful. It was hard. I'm looking forward to Riley coming back and hopefully seeing some change. They're not going to change me, it's pretty simple. Like, good luck trying. I love running a mark, like going out with friends and drinking. I'm not stoned. I drink until I don't know where I'm walking, I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't know who I'm with. I'm going to have a cone. I've done speed and acid. He's coming? Oh, yeah. I smoke bud whenever I have it, normally every day. It's mad just to pull a cone and then go to sleep. <coughs> <coughs> My parents don't know who I am at all. She's selfish. I can't talk to her, I can't tell her anything. She doesn't take anything I say on board. Shut up, I'm talking to Mum. Oh, Me and my nothing. dad get along nothing. if I do what I'm told, which is never. We spend night after night worrying about where you are. She started running away about a year ago. I'm currently staying in a mate's house and I've been here for like three weeks. I can do what I want when I'm with my mates. Like I can come home whenever I can stay out the night. It's easier than being with my parents and wondering where I am. We miss having her here and, you know, being part of our family. Um, that's, sorry. I don't care. Oh my God, I don't care. Shut up. Oh, Shut she... up. Oh. That's not right for you. All our hopes and dreams and expectations of her, we've had to let them go. We have definitely lost control. We have run out of options, we're not running out, we have run out of options. It's my life, I should be able to make my own choices, do what I want to do and pay for it when I get older. This is it Liam. Melbourne teenager Liam has been at this airport before. Two years ago, Liam's parents moved the family from England to give this bad boy a fresh start. But things have hit crisis point and Liam's about to get kicked out of the family home. I think I'm obnoxious, a little insecure. <laughs> it's his last chance at, at turning his life around. Please don't be rude. No, I won't. Liam's anger is a major issue. We tread on eggshells the whole time. If you feel that you're losing it, just take some time out to calm down. Well, when I'm overseas, well, I mean, yeah, I guess you've got to have some fun, you know? I think I'm a, a bad boy. <laughs> if a person jumps off the cliff into the water, he'll jump off a higher cliff because he wants the attention. I've taken speed, LSD, mushies, weed. If there's drugs around, he, he will use them to excess. I'm so baked. Oh. Eckies, juice, a little bit of coke. Because he does everything to excess. One uh, early morning, I came back uh, from the party and I had drugs on me. I beat the big woman in. I beat the uh, door in and then he called the cops. He got an intervention, intervention order. Intervention order. We him. took out an intervention order yeah. against him. Big one pisses me off. Sometimes I get quite scared. In the last year, he's got quite big and quite strong. Um, so I know I'm not able to physically overpower Liam. Every time he abuses his mum, a piece of me dies away and I just feel that I don't want nothing to do with you. I hate what he's doing, I hate him, and I hate what he's doing to our family. People piss me off, I mean, I'm just like... <laughs> Drop like a sack of shit, you know? If Liam was to go to prison, that would just break my heart. Cos he said to us one time, didn't he? He said, if I go to prison, Dad, you come and see me. I said, no, mate, I'm not come see you. He doesn't mean this because we can see he's a good person and we can see he's capable of doing so much more with his life than he is now. At the end of the day, I just want him to be happy and just be, just be the son that he was. I'd do anything to get him back.
Our teens are heading across the Tasman to New Zealand's North Island. Half an hour out of the bustling city of Auckland is the town of Albany. It's home. Matriarch Yvonne is not a woman you want to mess with. No smoking, no swearing, blaspheming or disrespectful language. Simon and Yvonne have been together for 30 years and raised two daughters, Sarah and Anna. Anna, husband Gavin and son Taylor also live on the parents' property. So these teens are coming and I reckon they're going to think I'm a pushover. They're in for a shock because they will not push me over. Mum, she's non-stop, so they're going to have to jump on this ride and go with it. The most important thing for us was agreeing on the boundaries we had for our kids. Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this Neomo leadership event. For the last five years I've worked with uh, school leavers, uh, helping them to cross over from teen to adult. In the last couple of years I've formalised that into something for myself called Making It On My Own or Miomo. There's pretty much nothing I haven't seen or had to deal with. No, we just thank you for this food. We've been Christians for many years. We've been going to the same church for 25 years now. I don't know why, but I've always had this silly little thing in my head that I'm, I'm one of God's personal all-time favourites. We live semi-rural, so for them to go anywhere, they're going to have to negotiate the driveway. It's about 400 metres long and very steep. Now, this is not going to be an easy week with these kids. You've really just got to stick to your guns, I guess. They're going to get a bit of a, a shock to the system. Love them to bits, but don't mess with me. Quite simply. Your nerves, Dad. <laughs> These two have reason to be nervous. They have a marijuana habit, or bud, as Riley calls it that needs feeding. We just have to get ciggies and bud and alcohol. Riley's also worried she's going to have to face her pet hate, religion. They're going to make us go to church a bit. No, nah, it's Sunday. Yeah. It could be like, yeah, the church is open seven days a week. Oh. Where are the ciggies? In my bra. Shorts, like, can you see them? No. Windows are tinted, can't see. Hi guys. Hi. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> How are you, Liv? I'm Yvonne. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah, am I allowed to give you a hug? Oh, yeah, Why not? Be away. Nice to meet you. Come in and meet the family. This is Anna. Hi. Hi. Anna is our eldest daughter. And this is her amazing little boy, Hi. Taylor. Hi. So, want to come and see where you're going to be living for a week? Yeah. yeah. This is your You can put your bag on there if you like. There's no TV. <laughs> I bought you a journal. Yeah. So I've written um, a little okay. hello to you. Yeah. Here is a little journal for you. Yep. Because right. I think you're a winner already. Welcome Riley to our home and our family. This week we will be filled with adventures and challenges to help you grow. We want to do all that we can to help you understand that God has created you for greatness. The religious. A new cigarette. It doesn't take our teens long to figure out how to give their new parents the slip. They've had some time on the plane over and to bond and form a strategy. I like it already. And that's what teens do. They run in packs and they fight the common enemy, right? Which they think's gonna be our rules. Liam, Riley, <gasps> afternoon tea. Go be there in a sec. <laughs> Come on, it's on now. <laughs> you discovered the vineyard. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah, but if Liam and Riley think they've outsmarted Yvonne and Simon, they're in for a rude shock. Oh, g'day Chris. Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi Chris. Hi. I'd like to introduce you to Riley and Liam. Just want to let you know yeah. that um, Max is a drug dog. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. 
He's come to just make sure we're all clean before we start. Oh, yep. yeah, yeah. All good? Yeah. Yeah? Great. So, just going to go through your gear. You're okay about that? Yeah. Yep. No My right. stuff's in the drawers. Yeah. Okay. Before we start, kids, I'm going to give you the option. Yeah. Is there any drugs in the drawers at all? No. Any no. drugs in your property? Any no. luggage? Anything no. else? No, no, no. You sure? Yeah, positive. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. What happens if there was drugs? You'd be on a fast road to about six k's down the road. Yep. It's a prison. As an official drug dog, if Max detects any drugs, the police must be called. If Max finds any drugs, he'll sit. Liam. The problem is with Liam's backpack. The dog went straight in the bag yep. and indicated straight in the bag, the yep. rucksack. Yep, no All we'll do is let it look through the bag with you. Yep, no worries. And just make sure there's nothing in there, yep. OK? Just uh, in the bag with you. Oh, yeah. oh no, I've, I've emptied it all in, into here. Oh, right. So yep. if you want to just whack it all over there. Can I just have a quick look at the bag? Yep, no worries. And this was a probably that was in the bag? Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Looks like there's a few remnants in the bag. That's been on the bag. We have you the bag has been looks like a few remnants. Might be tobacco because I have tobacco in my wallet. Yeah. Liam has carried dope in the backpack in Australia, and it's that scent the dog has detected. What's happened is there's been residue there and the dog's indicated on the residue. Oh, I won't be paying for that, will I? No. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah, no, I picked up the bag and stuff, but they could, oh, there's nothing in there. It's just a residue. Yeah. So you're not going to get arrested? No, it's fine. Thank God. How do you feel? You're not going to get arrested? Oh, my heart was going 10 to dozen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi, Anne. Because of the indication in the bedroom and the luggage, yeah. what I want to do is get the two ears together and just stand you over there. I'm just going to walk around with the dog. Okay? Yep, no worries. Riley looked confident, but I could see ticking over was, oh, they mean mm. business. They're not going to be the pushover, I thought. And that was the effect we wanted. Yeah. Yep. Sweet, as it? That's all right. Yeah. Good job, Max. Good, Max, yeah. After a welcome like that, the laying down of the house rules takes on a whole new dimension. There's no swearing or blaspheming or disrespectful language. No smoking or drugs or alcohol. Yeah. And you need to do what we ask you to do. Yep, no. OK? Yeah. I was watching both teens quite closely while Simon was speaking. Both of them had their <laughs> fingers in their mouth. They were holding onto their faces. So that was interesting body language. It was very protective. And if you don't adhere to those rules, there will be consequences. Yep. Yep. And you probably won't like the consequences. Yep. 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 I know both of you smoke. So what are we going to do with the cigarettes? I think you better hand them over, eh? No, we don't no, have any. You don't have any? Yep. No. I had my last two before we came. Did you? Yeah. yeah. So you've got no cigarettes on you at all? No. I'm asking you again because if I find any cigarettes, yeah. there will be a consequence. No. Yeah, no. So uh, we're all good? Yep. yep. Fantastic. We know you smoke, so hand over your ciggies. I'm not handing over shit. <laughs> the rules are a waste of time. Like, what are you going to do? I sort of want to push it just to see what happens so I know what I'm looking at. I can't believe they bought a dog, man. That <laughs> pissed me off harder. But every time Riley and Liam think they have a von Sust, she ups the ante. So next on the agenda is uh, we're going to go to church, but they're not going to know that. You in? If they refuse to go along, we're going to go anyway. The only way they're going to get fed tonight is at the church cafe. Just give you the heads up on what we're doing tonight. Yeah. Uh, we thought we'd take you to the church we go to because it's completely probably different to what you're expecting. Oh, OK. Yeah? Yeah. I live on the wild side. I don't like church. It's I don't believe in God, like the whole God looks down us and stuff. She should have told us before I wouldn't have even left the house. I can't go into churches. Can't you? What happens? I burn. <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, yeah, I mean, I can't be in a confined space. I just, I, no, I'm serious, I don't like it. Do you mind if I, I like, go out for breathers and stuff? Sure. You so, do what you need to do. Is that all right? Yep, Cheers, absolutely. Thanks. 
I'm not going to go to church and sing and listen to other people tell me what's going to happen after my life because they're not dead, they don't know. Riley's anti-religious stance calls for desperate measures. Where are they? Where are the kids? I don't know. Um, I think you better go. Oh, so I think they've done a runner, so you better run down there. Come on, guys. Remember the rules? Do less, do less, do less, do less. <laughs> I'm not going to change. Yo, we're both going to get in so much <laughs> shit. It's dog ass, let's go somewhere else. They're coming. Yeah, they are coming. <laughs> That's it. So, we're going home. No, we're going to Bolo. No, you've got you enough money. No. You lied to me. You said we were going to go to a restaurant, <laughs> but it's a bloody church. If you continue, listen to me, listen to Riley. What? If you continue this little charade. Yeah. It's not a charade. I don't want to go to church. Well, you're not Simple. going to church. So then can we go to Macca's? If you, no, you're not getting fed tonight. I told you that. Oh, but what? you're my guardian. My mum would bash you. Better put a lock in your cupboards because I'm made of them. No, I'm not. <laughs> no way. No. Catch you later. Until now. Liam has kept his temper under control, but has this pushed him over the edge? You know, they just ran without thinking. They ran to get away from whatever it was they were afraid of. <laughs> Alright, nah, wait, listen, right. I need to go get a feed. No, nah, we'll go home. Wait, we'll raid their covers later. Yeah, let's go. Alright, we'll come home. That's it. You've decided you're coming home? Yeah, yeah. Gee. Yeah. yeah. Good decision. This was not going to be an easy week. Tonight, of course, is the first night, uh, and they're and they're, you know, testing the boundaries. And that's exactly what Liam and Riley intend to do. Oh, no shit! I want to go to the bowl. What time is it shut? It's over ten. Which means like leave now. Despite the dark and being two kilometres from the nearest shops, they're off. It's this way. No, it's this way. I'm not scared of getting caught because I don't care. <laughs> She's just pure, utter selfishness and rebellion. She's living in a fantasy world, that girl. Total fantasy world. Are you in there, Liam? Ah, uh, he's in the bottle trying to get alcohol, and I'm pretty sure he got it. I'm a demo if he didn't. They're both underage, so in New Zealand they should have to show some ID. No, I don't think he did. Wait. Simon? Yep. Better come down, love, we've got an issue. Uh... Despite being underage, Liam has bought alcohol. I shouldn't ask for ID. I don't understand the road. I have to tell you that right now my guts are churning a bit. Yeah, I've got some real adrenaline flowing. I can't believe how blatant they are. They've actually got absolutely no conscience. And you know what happens when you've got no conscience? There's only three ways. Jail, institutions, or death. I really fear for those kids. It's mad though, I'm finally drinking. It's been two days, and now I'm drinking again. Can't stand it when I'm not. It didn't even break. <laughs> you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to let them sleep in their vomit tonight. But from a responsible point of view, we've got to go get them. Thank you. Yes. I'm so drunk. I'm actually drunk. It's, uh... I'm so hungry. I could eat a fucking horse. Not bad, boy. I reckon they're going to be down in the village because I reckon they're going to want to buy food because they haven't had any dinner. Uh-oh. Well, look who I found, eh? They were incredibly defiant. I mean, she, she's a piece of work, I tell you. She is a real piece of work. So what have you two been up to? Getting food because you wouldn't feed us. Have you been drinking? No. No. You haven't been drinking? No. 
Breathe on me. You have been drinking? It smells like pie, man. <laughs> you have been drinking? No, I haven't been drinking. Put that cigarette out. No. Get in the car. We're going home. So they got in, in the car very easily. I did expect to struggle, but they got in the car and we drove home um, and I have promised them that we're going to understand what a conscience is tomorrow. But tomorrow's still hours away. These guys haven't finished with tonight. I'm not scared of her. What's she going to do? Make me run a couple of laps. Fucking make me feed the chickens. They're treating us like fools. They're making a scam of the whole thing and that needs to stop. So I will keep upping the punishment until they break. It's as simple as that. Sorry, I'm going to bed now. I was writing in my journal. Well, let me tell you something. What? If you get out of bed again, yep. I'm taking all your bed clothes. I use my clothes. You understand? That'll go too. You won't take my clothes. Oh, I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. It's what the devil does. I have a really high belief in people. What I can't handle is blatant attitude. And more and more, I'm really upsetting Riley. Um, and so I'm going to have to wear her out because Liam will conform because he's a follower, he's not a leader. I can't sleep. Well, you can lie in bed. I can't. Think about the future, that might be a good idea. Don't leave mine go. Yep. <laughs> you bitch. So you might as well start stripping your bed now, buddy. I'm just taking everything. All the bath mats. All the towels, all the linen out of the cupboard, anything where they could make themselves warm, it's taking it all. After a few more hours of open defiance, Yvonne decides she's had enough. You can either come in, you can either come in and talk to me in the lounge room no, or not, night, or you can well, go I'm to sleep. I'm sleeping out there. I'll sit in there if I can have a cigarette. No. No. Right, OK. Well, I'm going to go to bed. All right, no. I'm turning all the lights off and I'm locking all the doors. Good night. <laughs> I think it was pretty clear I gave them a choice. They could come inside and sit and talk to me, or they could go to bed. But the shenanigans of running around the place like four-year-olds has got to stop. They're both warm enough, although it will be uncomfortable by about three o'clock in the morning. If this is going to be a seven-day battle, let the games begin. I don't like her. She fucking took my blankets. But you got to give her, like, a bit of respect. She followed through. I had the energy to stay up all night because we stole four energy shots from the fridge. 3.42. But they may have underestimated how long a cold New Zealand night can be. Oh, 4.35. <gasps> Almost there. <sighs> no, I'm seriously over this. Yeah, me too. I'm so cold. Oh. So will the new day bring a new attitude? Their New Zealand parents, Yvonne and Simon, certainly hope so. Morning, guys. Good morning. Oh, my God. I'm not doing an exercise. I'm going straight to bed. Thought you might like to have a box. A box? No, I'm all good, thanks. Get rid of your, get rid of your aggression. <laughs> no. They're desperate to go to bed, but they're not going to bed. No. They're going to train if we can make that happen um, and then they're going to school. So it's time for workout guys? No. This is my workout. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not working out. Oh, fuck it, I'm going to Macca's. No, <laughs> it's too far away. I don't care, I'm going to Macca's. <laughs> Aren't you going? No, I don't feel like Macca's, I feel like sleep. Oh, that's because like she got the trainer in. I ain't getting a trainer. I told you, I'm going to sleep. I'm drained, I've got no energy. I'm forgetting people's names and stuff. You think you're like top shit? You're fucking not. Well, this conversation's yeah. going nowhere. I'm a yeah. bit bored with it. That's all right. I <coughs> say that every time we have a conversation. So. Well, only because it ends up no, with you abusing me. Why are you fucking talking to me in the first place, then? Because I'm trying to help you, Riley. I'm no, you're fucking not. You just fucking locked me outside. No, you're you're you chose. Me out. You chose. No, you fucking outside. locked all the doors. I just walked up to the milk bar. I was gonna go Macca's, but I couldn't find it. Just gone into the shop. Some tired ass and bought four energy drinks. I'd rather be at home rather than here because I thought my mum was strict. 
Now I've met this chick, man. It's like a war, clash of the titans, if you know what I mean. Like, I mean, if the first night's bad, like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to stay awake for the whole week, you know? I'll give it a try, but <laughs> I'll be like looking like a junkie by the end of the, on the fly home. A shower and the promise of food has seen a different Riley emerge. Liam, however, is feeling the effects of no sleep. I can't eat. Fuck. And two energy drinks <sighs> on an empty stomach. Liam, are you OK? No. You're spewing? I'm not. No, I mean, I feel like I'm flying, like I'm on speed. That's what I feel like, man. I'm all up to which is it. A bit crock, a bit spicy. Yeah. Do you want another jacket? I'm cool, don't worry, man. It's all good. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry, bro. Okay. It's all good. It's okay. all good. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go to school, but I'm not gonna class. So, with no sleep and little food, Liam and Riley are off to school. Do we need to take a back a something for you to spew in? I'm not gonna spew, man. You're gonna I'm all spew good. on my neck. It's been three days. Since I had bud now, I don't know how I'm going to cope. At school today, we're going to ask if people smoke bud. If they say yes, we're going to ask them how they get it. But this school is not what they're expecting. The Cross Power Ministry School is in a rough part of town. It's run by men with tough reputations, but kind hearts. How are you, I'm Say. This is Liam. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Hi, and Riley. Riley. Riley, how are you yeah. guys? Yeah. Suddenly, Riley's needing Yvonne's support for her first class, a traditional Maori welcome. The thought of coming face to face with these men is all too much for Liam. I feel sick, man. I'm just going to kiss you on the cheek. I can give you a hug. I feel sick, guys, man. You're probably wondering what on earth have you got yourself into? Sully used to run a gang. Now he shows current gang members there is another way. This is our school and we, it's called the School of Hard Knocks. Liam was in an absolute mess. I thought uh, he's going to be a challenge for us. Hey, bro. Sully. How are you, bro? How you doing? Hey, good Get out of here. Me too. Welcome to my hood. All right, bro. So I have to think quickly about how I'm going to do this. And because of my experience of working with youth, I decided that I'm going to have to start on something practical. When we reached the motorcycle, straight away, the wall came right down because it touched something in him that he's uh, familiar with. I mean, I love bikes, man. Yeah. I didn't learn, like, school learn. It just made you realise, that like, there's so many people here. And you can, like, tell you, like, look at him, it's like they've gone through so much. Honestly, I actually see it, like, how much this, that just this school, changes their lives. We're going there and show you our, um, uh, what we call anger management machine. <laughs> the way that it's done here is it should be one discipline. A lot of young people that I've seen, that I've worked with, is they've got so much energy. And we need to channel that energy into something positive, something that they enjoy doing. And that is boxing. <laughs> This morning I saw Liam with a, with a brick wall who doesn't want to communicate, but I see in him now um, Liam. Yeah, it's good, man. I like this place. It comes around. At least Liam's newfound energy is now being channeled in the right direction. Yvonne gave back our bed sheets from last night. I'm excited about sleeping in this bed for the first time because, one, it's warm. Two, it's warm. All done. We should change the rules to say that we can have five cigarettes a day instead of none. Oh, she made us dinner. Me and Yvonne, we're getting along a lot better, I guess, like tonight. 
rather than last night because I, I don't know, things are going smoother. And tonight it's going to be an electric blanket warm as for the best sleep. I might actually be happy in the morning if she's lucky. Good morning, sweetheart. Can you believe it? It's daytime. <laughs> this morning um, was an incredible struggle. Liam eventually got up. He got up okay. He was a bit sluggish, a bit slow to start, you know, just normal. But Riley, she just turned completely feral, oh. abusing me. And there was a bit of argy-bargy going on and all sorts of things happened. Uh, so we're back to square one. Oh. At least Liam is stepping things up today. <laughs> Just because you don't want to get up doesn't mean say you tell somebody to F off repeatedly. Four, three. Seriously, fuck off. One more second. What? Five, four. Three, two, one. <laughs> you. The man. Five, four, three, two, one. Three. Oh, man. I need smoke. I really need smoke. We'll do the same thing tomorrow? Oh, if you want, yeah. Yeah, man, yeah. see it. Yeah. Man. Take yeah. it easy. A contrite Riley finally emerges, but all is not forgiven. <laughs> I'm sorry for swearing at you. Well, let me tell you something. That'll be the last time you ever open your mouth to me like that again. I will not put up with it. I am over her. She switches. She's like, she's, she's absolutely got one personality for a minute, then another. If you turn feral on me again tomorrow morning, it's going to get worse, babe. Yeah. Understand? You're messing with the wrong person. I gave her the alternative of going to school or staying here with me. Riley opts for school. A very wise decision. Today has been, like, amazing. We sat down in the classroom and talked about the future and like the control over like weed and like cigarettes and stuff. I am fortunate to come out of it alive. It seems a game of trust is not Riley's thing. Riley, when she saw the mouse traps, she was like, hell no, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do this. Straight in the middle, go. Careful, there's a mouse trap. No, don't do it. There's no way. Do it. But peer pressure finally wins out. Their fear of getting her toes jammed in mouse traps just went away after she she picked up her first lolly. All right, I'll do another one. Do another one. Doing the activities that they did yesterday and today, they showed a lot of potential. <laughs> Our teen's final school assignment is to help with the weekly neighbourhood get together. See, by the time we finish here, Riley's going to have the same muscles as me. It seems in just a short time, these two have made a big impact. They both came back two different people. I picked that up this morning that there's a little bit of enthusiasm. And then enthusiasm continued on by the end of the day. I mean, you talk to them now, they, we can have a good conversation. Yeah, that, thanks for letting us come to your school and stuff. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. That's good. These two are special. You know, they, they, they have their own um, personalities, but and they all also the uniqueness. <coughs> But behind the smiles and hugs, Riley is hiding a dark secret. Today when we went to the Sausage Sizzle, did all that, I decided that I wanted to go speak to the girls that were there, like see how school is, like how they like it in the area. I went and sat down and I was like, hey, how are you going? Do you mind if I talk to you like, about your life in New Zealand because I'm from Australia? Hi. Yeah, sorry, New South Wales. Where's uh, Riley going? She's like, oh, do you drink and smoke weed? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh, do you have any on you? She pulled out a bud and she snapped it in half and she's like, oh, here's two cones. I like, should give you two cones. Um, have fun with it. I was like thinking about saying no and then I was like, no, I'll take it. 
I'm a little bit nervous of getting caught. Because I get caught and I should call the cops. But, like, I've got it. What can I do? Smoke it and hope she doesn't find out. Hope she doesn't know now. Using the drug will betray the trust of her host mother, Yvonne. Hey, Yvonne. Um, I want to tell you, like, be honest with you, because I really want to work things out. Like, today in the park, someone gave me some weed and I took it. You used it or you just got it? No, I just, I thought about it and thought about it. And, like, oh, honestly, I, I don't want it. Mm, how awesome is that? That's huge for you, isn't it? Yeah. We're here to change, like... Something's happened for you today, isn't it? Yeah, like, seeing how their lives are and, like... Yeah. I know. Huge step, babe. Yeah. It made me feel a lot better than I thought it would, because it feels like a first step into not smoking as much. It was not actually about the drugs. It was about her wanting to move ahead in her life. And so she's made a very important decision for a long-term future rather than a short-term gain. So I'm excited, really, really excited. From here, I really just want to have a good week and finish off the week like, like a normal family would. While Yvonne is delighted at Riley flushing her drugs away, Liam is angry that Riley confessed without consulting him. It's just her, man. I, I want to get rid of some anger. I'm going to find a punch on. It was nearly time for bed. Uh, it was about half past ten. And next thing, he's gone. It's only just clicked tonight, you know? Like, I don't know, man. Just, just something clicked about it, and I just fucking hate her. I just, I, I'm thinking to myself, how did the switch? And then I'm thinking to myself, something's not right. Oh, fucking God. Fucking kill him, man. He's like, I'm leaving the house because of that. The fact that she smiled and thought she was better than me. I'm not even craving weed, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm off of drugs, off of everything, you know? Except for ciggies, you know? That, that is starting to worry me now, big time. Fuck's sake. At the start, Liam's anger is all directed at Riley. But then, Yvonne shows up. Where are you going, Liam? Get back in your car and go back. Something's happened. You've switched again. Ready? Listen. Listen. Don't, don't. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Oh, no, oh, no. No, you won't. No, you won't. I wasn't sure if he was actually going to hit me or not. Part of me, I guess, went into survival mode, and I'm thinking, you know, any minute now, I could be lying flat on the ground with a fist in my face. I uh, could not restrain him in terms of getting him to come into the car or come back home, so followed him for a couple of kilometres. He was wild, he was volatile, he was just defiant. Fuck off! Fuck off! Uh, he threw a rock or something uh, at the car, at the windscreen. Why don't you get in the car, mate, and we'll go home? You're going to run out of puff. Why, why are you losing the plot again, mate? You're doing so well. My tactic is alternating between getting him to calm down and getting him to see how silly it is but I think the, the less I actually have to do with him now, the better, and I just follow him and let him walk himself out. The two-faced cow, it needs a good smack. I will smack you if you piss me off too much. This is, this is serious now. This is not a naughty boy anymore. This is serious stuff. We're getting pretty close to the police station, so keep walking and I'll think about whether I'm going to take him in there and press charges. One hour later, a now calm yeah. Liam is at Yvonne's driveway asking for forgiveness. I just want to say I'm really, 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 like, really sorry for what I did. It was not right. It was immature. It was spiteful. He says he's repentant, he's sorry. And look, I think he is. 
I think he probably is as shocked as anybody with the way he flips in from one personality to the other. And my heart goes out to him. Once I've had like a decent night's kip, I'll be in a good frame of mind. Liam, I can't have you in my house tonight. Would you just give me one more chance, please? No, I'm sorry, I can't. My husband goes to Switzerland tomorrow. I will be alone in the house with a man who has at least twice threatened to do me some serious harm. You're too big a threat to have around my grandson. Way too big a threat. How would you like someone like you to be threatening your mother? Oh, I wouldn't like it. No, but you I want to work things out with her mum so she would give me a second chance and so that I can see my sister grow up. You are the one person in the world <laughs> she should be looking up to. She wants to love you and yet secretly she's probably quite afraid of you. That's where drugs will take you. So you go and we'll find a place for you to be tonight where you'll be safe and warm and have the ability to have a good sleep, okay? So we'll leave it there now, okay? No, no. Right. <laughs> I really, really want to change. I don't want to be like this anymore. This is my last chance, you know? <laughs> Because of my sister, you know. I don't want to take a job. I don't want to be like me, the way I be to my parents, you know. I don't want that, you know, because I love my family. <laughs> and like, I'm here to change. And I need to change. If like, I want to help my mum and my dad and my sister, you know. <laughs> I don't know why I don't listen to her mom. But I listened to her tonight and she's correct about all the things, you know. I want to be someone that's like good all the time, someone that stays out of mischief, someone that's got, actually holds down a job. And I want to change, I really need to change. After a disturbing temper tantrum last night, a banished Liam is returning to speak to Yvonne. My body feels absolutely shattered. I hope everything's like cool down. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. How did you sleep? Oh, yeah, I had a nice sleep. OK. I want to stay because I believe there's much still to learn. Do you want to come in? Yes, please. OK. I've got something for you that I think you'll want to read. It's from your mum. Thanks. Thanks. Dear Liam, how did we ever get here, love? One minute it was the best day of our lives as Dad and I stared at our beautiful baby boy the day you were born. Now it's a struggle to hold our once happy family together. Every day we hope you'll realise how much the actions you do now will impact and dictate all our futures. We are so sad because we feel we are losing you to a life that's nowhere near the life we dreamt for you. All your life we have loved and cared for you, always trying to do and give you the best we could. We know you love your sister, but it upsets us so much. When you ignore her, I think she doesn't need support from you. You're her big brother, and she loves you but gets confused. She's going to look at your actions now, and we worry they will have a detrimental effect on her future. You think it was easy for us to have you arrested and take the intervention order against our own son. We had to protect Imogen, ourselves and our home. And even you from yourself. 
We want the smart, handsome, gorgeous, funny son back to the East to get it so much joy. I want to be proud of your achievements. I want you to respect yourself and care about the people that surround you and love you. All I love, Mum and Dad. Picture from my sister. It's me, Dad, Mum, and Imogen. In like a love heart. A rainbow over the top. <laughs> it's been hard because we haven't been able to talk to him. So, and writing the letter was a good communication tool because he had to read it and had to take in what we'd put down. Yvonne has planned a treat for her visiting teens. I'm so nervous. A daredevil bungee jump off the Auckland Bridge. But Liam's behaviour has cost him the chance at the thrill of a lifetime. The longer you take, the harder it gets. End of life on the edge, Ralph. Yeah, but on the ground. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not here to watch you. I don't and just think about it. it's not a good thing, OK? Because then you convince yourself not to do it. Just keep on going out to the edge. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay. It's just all in your head. Keep on going. I only have little feet. Right. Right. Keep going. No, I can't do it. No, 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 I can't. It'll be the best feeling of you. You're just so close to experience the best feeling that you're about to feel, okay? And we'll just give it a go when you're ready. No. Why not? Because I can't do it. So we've got to give it a go. I'm running out of material. Drugs compared to bungee jumping. Nah, bungee jumping was better. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, buddy. What are you doing? After Can such you? a huge personal achievement, it's time for Riley to also get a message from home. Dear Riley, we want to start by saying how much we miss the good times that we used to be able to have together as a family. In the past, you have given us many proud moments as parents. But right now, we honestly feel, Riley, that you have lost your way or more to the point, your direction and purpose. These are the times when we have fears for your safety. With many a tear shed, the nights we are out waiting for you to come home, or at least trying to contact you. The communication has been closed from your side for so long, and that makes us feel so distant from you and your feelings. Lots of little changes add up to big changes when they are all put together. We would like to think that on your return home, that all the negative thoughts and behaviours will be replaced with a more positive outlook on life, clean sleep and the chance for some new family good times again. Love always and forever, Mum and Dad. I never really thought of how Mum and Dad were feeling. I was selfish at home. I just did what I wanted to do. It seems the week is bringing breakthroughs all round. Riley and Liam are now doing what they're asked. Feels weird making breakfast for everyone because I never make breakfast at home. Today 
we have our Miomo Leadership Event and this is uh, an event we put on for our graduates and because we've had such a great week, such a wonderful breakthrough with both the teens, uh, we've asked them to speak and they've said yes. But also because it's been such a breakthrough week, we've got something special planned for them. We have brought over their mums from Australia and they are going to be in another room watching them speak so that it's going to be a huge surprise. I have had the privilege in the last seven days of having two beautiful young teenagers live with me. Now we have all had our lives transformed, there's no question about that. And I'd like to invite them to the stage. And I'd firstly like to invite you, Liam, to come up. Give him a huge round of applause, Liam! With their mums secretly watching on a monitor next door, Liam takes to the microphone. How did you get that shot? I never knew that one week would uh, change me, but it, but it did, you know. Um, since being over here, I have like learnt many things, such as like different ways of schooling and discipline. I've learnt new skills about how to focus my anger in different ways in that, uh, than just going out looking for fights or fighting my mum and dad. And I never like really respect my parents, but like I said, since being here. I've changed so much, it's like, I've changed the way I think. I've changed my vocabulary. I like, <laughs> I don't swear as much now, you know. Um, this has happened like, because I feel respect for other people that respect me and I respect them in return, you know. Thanks to uh, Simon and Yvonne for letting me live. <laughs> I'm pretty lucky I didn't wake up with a hatchet in me or something, you know. <laughs> Um, now nah, we've been through hell and back this week, you know, but um, I'm definitely on a straight and narrow. Nah, seriously, thanks for uh, showing me the balance between love and discipline. Thanks a lot. Now, let's hear from the gorgeous Riley. Drugs, alcohol and stealing was my life before I came over here. I was 14 and a successful swimmer and water polo player and I was school vice captain of my primary school. Um, I'm Riley and today I just want to talk to you about my story and how much this opportunity has changed my life. When I was 15 I started running away from home and drugs became a big part of my life. I'd spend weeks away from home making money with no job. My parents supported me as a missing person and I ended up going home. I did run away many times after that but I was emotionally scarred by one time when I ran away from home with an older man. <laughs> Good thinking that he would treat me as a friend and he was going to look after me. But while being there, some nasty things happened that I never thought would. I waited three days for money to go in my bank so I could go home. My attitude at the start of this trip was not good at all. As Yvonne would like to say, feral. My s my swearing was constant and my respect was zero, and I'm sure Yvonne can tell you that. I can't talk about everything, but there's no way I could forget Yvonne. The things she has done for me are going to change my life for forever. The determination in that woman is crazy, someone I will never mess with. <laughs> she has made me realise so many things, but the main thing being how important family is. A special thank you from the bottom of my heart to Yvonne, and she is someone who I'll have forever have in my heart. This week has done a lot for me, like, because from the start, I didn't really care. I thought that I wouldn't change and that I'd go home the same person, but it's just changed my complete outlook on life. My mum told me that she was proud today. She's like, I'm proud of what you did, and I'm proud of what you shared, and I'm proud of how you changed. And she's like, but make sure you stay like that. I think I have to make massive plans to change my life back there because everyone's the same. And that's sort of why I want to come back here so quickly, because I'm scared that if I stay there for too long, I'll get involved in the same stuff again. 
Like, it feels good to pack up and go home, you know? But on the other hand, I don't want to go home because I've had so much fun and different experience and that. I'm a little worried about going home and not being able to um, follow through with what I started, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Number here, guys. So good. Give all the bags in the car. Um, this is just saying thank you yeah. for having us stay. Thank you so much. Oh, Changing thanks, our lives. Guys. Dear Yvonne and Simon, thank you so much for the opportunity to see how your lives work and for welcoming me into your home with an open heart. I am truly appreciative for what you have done. Lots and lots and lots of love, Riley. Kiss, kiss, kiss. At one point, Riley said to me, Eva, you've really changed our lives, but have we changed yours? Make me proud of you. Yep, I'll be back. So if you change my life, this will be the most profound week probably of my life. Make me proud, eh? <laughs> Bye, guys. I'm going to miss you. I've had a blast, it's been so fantastic. It's been the best like experience of my life, I reckon. The girl that drove in here seven days ago was like really bad. And now like it feels completely different. Like it feels like I'm turning my life over for the better. Oh, I'm a bit nervous to meet everyone, you know, like our guests have changed and I'm like, nervous to be my new self, you know. That's good. I think that's, that's going to be a positive thing, though. Yeah. Isn't it? I've missed Imogen a lot. Oh, every time anyone spoke about Imogen over there, I cried. I, I bought my eyes out big time. I'm excited that he's coming home, and um, I just I'm hoping that he's going to change. I've quit smoking, quick drugs. I slammed all the brakes, whacked the handbrake on and done a U-turn and come back. I love him and I miss him. Hello, mate. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> you alright? Yeah. I've certainly seen a difference in Liam. Um, he, seems, he seems happier, his eyes are clear. I hope Liam has um, turned a corner in his life and, you know, this could be the making of him. This experience has been absolutely fabulous and I'm very, very happy that the way I've just changed, you know, I feel so much better. I feel different, like I used to be back in primary school. What I liked um, was the fact that uh, he can look at you now. Yeah. Whereas it was always looking down. Looking and down and everything, yeah. I do kind of feel that my guard's still up and I need to work on that so that we can all move forward mm. and embrace the change in Liam. Um, and the positiveness that he's come home with. Yeah, I hope I just can stay this way, you know, like I'm determined to as well. I'm proud that he's, he's not on drugs anymore and he's given up smoking and he's going into boxing, which is great. So hopefully I'll be in his corner fighting for him. It feels weird coming home. It's like, I felt like I was out of runs for ages. I hope when Riley gets back we can hang out more, talk about a lot more things and I hope she will like not be so angry at me all the time. I think my friends will be like shocked because I was the one that was always like in the middle of it and now it's just like no. It's going to be really weird when they're all smoking and so I don't smoke anymore. We're just hoping that we can communicate with her again I think. Home. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you going? Hello. 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 Clean face. Hello. <laughs> no makeup. No. Feels like I've come back from home to go to another home. Hello, natural. Debut <laughs> <laughs> home, Molly. I think that a lot of the lessons that the family have taught me will stick, but not only that, but the lessons I've learnt by myself. It will just be seeing how things go for the first couple of weeks, really trying to get a job as soon as I can. I think that one of the main lessons that they taught us when we were there was that drugs weren't like, really important in your life and that you don't need them to be happy, you just choose for them to be the thing that makes you happy. I hope she can take on board what she's learnt from Yvonne and um, carry it through. My outlook on life has changed a lot, just 
around everything, like the, the drugs, the family, knowing that I need to make new friends, getting a job or studying, like needing to do something and needing to keep my mind occupied so that I'm not wasting my time.